So, you've started a new campaign in Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Where do you begin? How do you make sure that your ships run efficiently and run effectively? Let me begin with tip number one. Immediately, at the start of a campaign, go to Finances and get this crew slider, the crew training slider, all the way over to Max. I don't care what else you have to do to make sure that the crew training budget gets done. But this is going to make the difference between hitting a target or missing a target. Let me show you why that is. When your ships first get their new crew, they start out at cadet level training. Now I'm in the custom battle editor, so that means that you're not going to be seeing this particular section when you're designing a ship for your campaign. But this is what the crew training does. Over here on the left, they're currently set as cadets. What you can see on the right is that I have a minus 15% modifier to accuracy. So the cadets are so bad at firing, loading, aiming, controlling damage to the ship, that all of these specs are going to drag your ships down. Now what the crew training does is gradually increase this level to green. When you're at green, you're still looking at some detractors. You're at minus 5.5, minus 7.4. 7.4 additional time to reload and a little bit less effective at damage control. Still, it's not as terrible as cadets. If you ramp up to trained or even to regular, <clears throat> now you're starting to get some pretty decent crews. Because at the regular stage, and I'm going to set it at let's say 50 because that's where regular starts and where trained ends, at regular you get a 10% bonus to accuracy. So instead of having a minus 15%, you now get a 10% bonus. You also get a 20% faster aiming time, which means that it's going to take far less likely or far less time to get that first shot to actually connect with the target. And this, of course, does tie in with accuracy. It also takes less time to reload and your crew gets better at controlling damage. So how do you get more experienced crews? How do you get them to seasoned? Just use your ships. Put them through their paces. Throw them into a battle. And at some point, you're going to get seasoned and potentially even veteran crews. Now, veteran crew starts at officially 83, uh, sorry, 84, and goes all the way up to 100. Let's say that you have a superbly trained crew. These are all veteran combatiers. They've been in combat, they have seen it all, and they are ready to crew your ships. If you have a fully trained veteran crew, you have a 30% accuracy bonus. So all the way from the cadets at minus 15% to a bonus accuracy of 30%. Keep in mind, accuracy is not just uh, decided by your crew. It is also decided by the rangefinder that you have on your ship. It's also decided by how stable your ship is, what the ocean state is. But crew is definitely a major factor. It also means your aiming time is 50% faster than it normally would be. Your reload time is reduced by 20%. And your damage control is 60% better than what you would normally have. So get that crew slider, that crew training slider, and max it out all the way at the start of the campaign. Tip number two, limit your research. If you hit the research tab, you're going to be confronted with the tech tree. Now, considering I'm running a very early version of the campaign, there is a lot of work in progress. But the key feature here is priorities. You need to limit your priorities. Don't spend all of these. Because here is what happens. Let's say that I want to focus on internals protection. This is currently going to take 10 months. If I invest one of those free priority slots, then the research is going to cut in half. It's going to take 5 months instead of 10. Everything else will take longer. Potentially a lot longer. Because if you look at the five months, and now I take it off, this one jumped from 35 to 52 months, simply by adding a priority here. The same thing can be said for hull protection, for example, and gun layout. So here's what happens. I save effectively five months here, but I get added four months here. Gun layout goes from nine to 13, so that's another four months. Hull construction went from 35 to 52. I can still push this down, of course, if I want to set another priority slot on hull construction. And that would bring it down to 23 months, at the expense of other research projects. 
because now the internals protection, which was sitting at a nice five months, is now back to seven months, and hull protection took another three months. Gun layout takes another four months. All of these things are going to take a lot more time. Generally, it is recommended not to spend too many of these priority slots. I try to have only one. Only one thing that I think is going to make my ships better in the short run. And this could be, for example, when you're trying to get, keep your ships alive, hull protection. It's something that all ships can equip. In this case, it's torpedo protection too. Well, not all ships, of course. Destroyers and torpedo boats are excluded. When it comes to something else that you don't even have a research priority for, or that you don't know what the next discovery is, I would not set research priority to that. Go for the safe things, the things that you know you need, the things that know will set your ships ahead of the curve, and spend ideally one, potentially two, but no more than that priorities on that. Because the rest is just detrimental to your research progress. Tip number three, make sure that your ships are actually deployed. It's going to sound a little curious, but sometimes your ships are just sitting there. And that's a waste of a good ship. So once you have your ships built, go to fleet and check what your ships are doing. Are they in being or are they in sea control? If it's a ship in being, then it exists and nothing more. It sits in a port. It sits in, well, sometimes uh, during World War II, for example, in a fjord. And it is just sitting there doing nothing. It's essentially a threat that sometimes you might have to dedicate resources to, but it is not a ship that is currently harassing transports, attacking your fleet, or doing other offensive actions. What you want to be doing is setting these guys to sea control. And by doing that, you make sure that the ship is actually somewhere on the strategic map. In this version of the campaign, you don't have control over where your ship goes. It's just a bit of a random battle incident. But by having them on sea control, you make sure that you have them deployed. If you have a whole bunch of ships and you don't want to be clicking every single ship with uh, in being to sea control, click one, hold control, and you can select single ships. If you click one, you hold shift, and then you can have a whole line of them, and you can immediately switch them all over to sea control. Number four. Make sure that ships which have seen combat have their crews replenished. If you go to fleet, you have this little tick box here, add crew. If this option is enabled, ship's crew is automatically replenished at the start of the next turn. This is going to be important. A ship that takes damage in combat is inevitably going to take a lot of crew losses. It's also going to depend on how much crew you have on a ship. If you have less crew than you would normally have, then that's going to start causing issues. Your guns might not reload as quickly. Your torpedoes might not function as well as you like. And more essentially, your damage control is going to be hampered simply by not having enough sailors to do their duties. Make sure that you have this tick box on. Currently, it seems that it's either through saving the campaign or something else. It doesn't stay on. Make sure that you check this. This way, you can see if a ship's crew is automatically replenished. It saves you a lot of time, this little tick box here. And ideally, it would be on by default. I'm not sure why Game Labs hasn't done that. And I hope that this is something that will get fixed. Tip number five. It is okay to run away. It might not be the most honorable thing to do, but if you have a ship then it is always better to keep it alive than to have it destroyed, as sacrificial and honorable as that might be. In my case, I have the HMS Erin. She is crewed by veterans, which ties into the first tip. This is not a ship, and especially not a crew that I want to lose. I want to keep the ship alive. If you find that your ship is outnumbered and outgunned, it is sometimes better to just run away. Make sure that you disengage. Repairing a ship is always faster and cheaper than building a new one. And having a ship in dry dock for three months is always preferential over building a new ship, which could take upwards of 15 months. Which means that for three months, you might not have the ship in being, you might not have it on sea control, but at least after that, she'll be back in the fight with her tra veteran trained crew, in my case. If you lose the ship, you're going to be in trouble. 
because then you're starting with a new ship after 15 months. They're cadets. So effectively, you're looking at a ship which is not going to be effective for 15 months or which is not going to be there for 15 months. And on top of that, you're looking at potentially another five to six months of crew training, which means that essentially by being a bit maybe uh, headstrong and not retreating your battleship when you had the chance, you're out of a battleship for effectively 20 to 24 months. And of course, as we venture into later eras where it takes more time to build a ship, it's going to be progressively worse. So running away is okay. Make sure you turn your stern towards the enemy and floor it. Go as quickly as you can. And if nothing else works, you can always try to leave battle. But be aware that this can have unpredictable results. You don't know how the AI is going to treat this. So leave at your own peril. It is always better to turn tail and wait for that end battle button to appear in the middle of the screen. I hope that you found these tips helpful. If you have any further questions, let me know down below in the comments. Ask your question there and I'll answer it as best I can. Keep in mind that the game is in active development and that means that things will change. The video might get outdated and at some point I'll update it to include further tips. Thank you for watching. Good luck on your campaign.